my good friend, uh, Dr. Malik Tatapapula, for the invitation. Now, um, as slides are coming up, um, we have already gone through five generations. Therefore, it is a fair question to ask, what can we expect as something new in 6G? But just I will pause there for a few seconds for my slides to come up. Um, obviously, uh, 6G is a very big ecosystem, and there are lots and lots of components, but there are some big ticket items, and as a matter of fact, 6G can be the start of a new wireless revolution. Now, uh, 6G timeline is very close for an academic just few years. We can measure the timeline with PhD thesis. One thesis takes five years. So inevitably, I will have to look a little bit beyond 6G as well. Oops, these slides. Um, ITU brought a framework last year to 6G discussions. Uh, I am sure you must have seen this uh, wheel chart. Basically, it really doesn't cut anymore if I say that, look, I will talk about technologies which will double, triple your device speed, right? We, we have gotten used to that. So in the southern part of the uh, wheel diagram, there are legacy KPIs, and obviously there are better values for those KPIs. But what is more interesting is the upper part, which is a new discussion. And most of those things, whether it is coverage and so on, it is next to impossible to achieve without NTN, non-terrestrial networks. Um, and in particular here, we are talking about direct-to-device. Um, I will uh, uh, kind of uh, steal an expression from my good friend Malik, uh, triple mode devices. Our devices today are dual mode devices indoors. We connect to Wi-Fi outdoors to the mobile network. But tomorrow, opportunistically, uh, they will also be connecting to non-terrestrial networks. So the first five generations enabled uh, mobile connectivity. Oh, so where should I? What? Oh, I, OK, sorry. Um, and uh, the, the meaning of connectivity itself evolved. It started with voice, you know, now it is video and everything. And it works perfectly if the network exists. So next slide. I don't know why I am doing this, but this picture from last year, I was taking a train from Ottawa to Toronto. I am not talking about rural Canada. This is the most urban part of Canada. One third of the tracks, there is no signal. So we are talking about 6G, you can't send an SMS signal. And the human person, we are very tolerant to these disruptions. But imagine 10, 15 years down the road, robots of all sorts, whether it is self-driving vehicles, uh, cargo drones, these type of outages uh, will not be acceptable. In that way, the first five generations can be bundled together as the first wireless revolution, but the second revolution will start with the integration of NTN, and it is ubiquitous and hyper-connectivity. Hyper and this is a discussion that is starting with 6G, and it will continue in the foreseeable future. Now, today, when we say NTN, we understand a few things, satellites for rural and remote, and generally this discussion is framed within the 6G terms. But actually, we, we, will, we should be ready to look beyond 6G. We are talking about an all integrated networks. As I will allude in the coming slides, it is more than satellites. Um, uh, there is more in NTN than satellites, and there is more than just plain connectivity. And probably the most important point, NTN is not just for rural and remote. NTN at some point will be primarily for urban areas. That thing that is beyond satellites is high altitude platform stations. 
By the way, India is very strong in this area. Several startups in, in India, in the HAPS area, HAPS refers to near space, uh, uh, 20 kilometers above the ground, different types of aircrafts, whether it is a Zeppelin or a glider or some sort of an airship, non-orbiting or quasi-stationary, um, and providing uh, lots of uh, services, including connectivity. So imagine a time, whether it is 15 years, 20 years, Delhi, a big metropole, 40 million population. I cannot imagine such an area without a near space network. So small base stations, macro base stations on the ground, and super macro base stations in stratosphere, and then satellites on the top. These HAPS platforms are connected with free space optical links to each other. They are tied to space and they are tied to ground stations. They are serving with a variety of beams, whether it is hotspot, big beams for IoT, for cargo drones, just you, you name it. And again, connectivity is just the start of the discussion. Imagine the possibilities of this network can bring to intelligence, reconnaissance, security. Uh, at some point, all the vehicles in Delhi might have license plates in their rooftops. Any traffic infringement can instantaneously be uh, picked up by high altitude platform stations. So this network is also not only resilient, but very energy efficient rather than uh, blindly densifying the ground network, we can have these spot beams in near space and turn them on and off based on need. There is an event uh, just in the outskirts of Delhi and uh, as needed spot beams are turned on and all the resources are put together uh, so they are not really wasted. They are utilized whenever uh, there is a need. So I'm just wrapping it up. Imagine again, you want to have the digital twin of the vehicular traffic in, in the city. Uh, what, there is no better way than doing this by using uh, high altitude platform stations. We have NTN for hyper-connected Canada vision in Canada. Three important points. We are not talking about a handful of remote villages, rather, entire land, each square centimeter, if I may say, airspace and offshore. And it is also for populated areas, urban areas, as I mentioned, in addition to rural and remote. And connectivity is just the start, but there is edge computing, sensing, reconnaissance, navigation, positioning, localization, all these applications are possible. So it is a multi-trillion dollar business as we move towards 2040s. And I guess my last slide, there is big opportunity in space and near space. It cannot be accidental that world's two richest persons, combined personal wealth, half a trillion dollar, they are betting in space and near space. Once again, don't be stuck to 2030 as timeline 2030 will come and just go away very quickly. If we have a long, longer vision, NTN will be part of uh, our architecture in an inevitable manner. Thank you.